will be split into two different parts, the first being the project making process and the second being how I use those projects to finish up my goblin core area. My last video was a woods makeover and I told you guys that I wanted to make a few more projects to finish it up so that is what this is. I'll put a timestamp for when the finishing starts but other than that let's jump into the actual projects. A trinket tray. I saw this picture on Pinterest so so long ago and it got me thinking that a tray like this would be really cool to hold such things as trinkets but made out of something more natural instead of metal. So I headed out to my woods where I have my little goblin grove. Thank you Marvin Mori for that wonderful name idea and I grabbed a bunch of supplies whether it was roots, thick sturdy vines, or sticks. Coming back inside I began breaking up the pieces. Now for the general tray shape you're going to need pieces to go along the bottom, two longer ones to hold all of those base pieces down, a few to go on the sides, and then four short pieces to hold up, then two more handle pieces. You of course don't need handles, you could do more of a flat tray, you could add four handles instead of two, that's just kind of the base design, and I'm connecting all of this with hot glue. You could do it all connected with vine, all connected with string, you could do a specific wood glue, it's up to you, I just thought hot glue would be the most easiest and quickest way, but still also used a vine to wrap around and kind of give some more greenery to it in the end. I made this for trinkets to hold little rings or bracelets, dried flowers, things like that, but you can make a bigger size for plants or books or magazines, really anything. It just depends on the space or what you want to use with it. Definitely a lot of different shapes and sizes you could do. I think sort of like an octagon or triangle shape could be really fun in the different ways that you break up the sticks. A lot of possibilities for this one. Recycled paper. There are so many ways to do this project, but I broke it down to what I think is the most simplest method and here's how you do it. I knew I wanted to dye my paper naturally, but if you're using food color paint, skip a few seconds ahead. I went outside and grabbed some purple heart, chopped it up, and poured a few cups of boiling water on top so that I could steep it. But with that aside, I moved on to the main part, which is ripping up the paper. The easiest way to do this is to put your paper and water in a blender and make the pulp that way, but you can also use scissors or these kind of crafty paper cutters. I did it by hand just because I wanted to to use as few tools as possible and I just ripped it up until they were all about one by one inch squares and then poured that plant water over top or you can just do your plain water and let it sit for a few minutes in the heat and then went ahead and ground it up to what it would be in its final pulp state. This doesn't actually take as long as you would think by hand, only about 10 minutes for seven to 10 sheets I think. And once your pulp is done, you're gonna wanna grab another dish and then put something down. You can do a towel, one of these mesh laundry bags, use a decal or even a piece of lace I find can work. I put my towel down though and put my pulp on top of it, flipping the towel over and pressing it down into the shape in the thinnest amount that I could get it into, removing all the excess water from the top with a sponge, and then kind of taking it out and peeling it off for your paper. Like I said, this one turned out a little bit too thick. I did another one that turned out much better and thinner just because I had more water in the pulp. To dry it though, you can just leave it sitting out, but I like to dry my paper in a kind of clothesline way. So I made a little clothesline by taking a root and weighing it down with different things on some shells in my goblin grove and use some clothespins to hang it up. If you want to make sure it's completely flat you can also put it under a book. Modeling clay. The base recipe for this is to have half a cup of water and add to that a half cup of salt and a cup of flour. You can of course make this a larger or smaller batch just making sure that you have one part salt and water and then two parts flour. That being said once you make it or before you actually mix it you can also add some coloring. You could do a plant-based coloring, you could use just regular food dye, you could use acrylic or watercolor paint, you could even try to get some ink out of markers. I chose to do this after I mixed mine and kind of divided the clay into different parts so that I could make different things with the different colored pieces. But you don't necessarily have to color the dough either. You could totally form your shapes or whatever you're using it for and then paint on top of it after, kind of more like a pottery style. Whichever one you prefer, that is the base recipe and the different options for coloring trinkets. We made a tray for them so I figured I'd show you how to actually make a few. The first one being some insect pins. Now this sounds kind of gross but the main concept is to paint, draw, color, whatever medium you'd like to use, a picture of some sort of bug whether it be a butterfly or a dragonfly, a moth, I think you could even do flowers and it would be really cool, and to then cut out and either clear coat or leave plain before folding or kind of crinkling in a 3D way and pinning into a hairstyle. Like I said this doesn't have 
have to be for a hairstyle. I think they could be really cool in a corner in a wall, especially like the butterflies or just cute paper flowers to decorate in a collage. So many things you can do with them, but if you would like to use them in your hair, I just used some crafting wire that I had to kind of form into a little bobby pin just so I didn't have to waste a bobby pin and also could paint the wire without making a colored bobby pin if I wanted it to blend in with the design a little bit more. So many variations with this, so many mediums you can use, different sizes of course. I personally really liked the dragonfly idea. Next is kind of hot glue dried flower projects. I've seen these kind of clear filled in flower or bead pendants and thought I could make some really cheap dupes for them with just a bit of wire, maybe an extra keychain or necklace chain that I had, and some hot glue. So I made the wire into a circular shape that I liked, put it on some parchment paper, put a dab of glue in the middle to kind of just secure the flower down so it won't move around, and then filled in the rest of the circle with glue, making sure not to do too much so that I can then fold over the parchment and make sure that it's completely flat and touching all of the edges so that the wire stays together, but doesn't have so much glue that it's overflowing or is unflat. You can either connect to jump ring through the hot glue or if like me you accidentally have a bit of a gap at the top you can put it through that opening as well if you wanted to make it into a necklace. I also did the same concept but just for a ring that I kind of wrapped some wire around and used this little yellow flower. Just make sure you try to use the thinnest amount of hot glue that you can so that it doesn't get so thick that it kind of blurs the image of the flower inside. With that being said you don't have to use a flower. You could do beads, you could do printouts, anything you'd like. After that is just to kind of use the clay that we made earlier into things. I kind of made this little adorable like dilapidated sort of crooked and oddly sized frog trinket. Added some details on with Sharpie and just thought he turned out really funky and cute. I also made a little inchworm that I kind of formed into an arch shape. Added some eyes to that with some watercolor. Just creating cute little things to put on a tray. mini candles. My inspiration for this was once again an Instagram picture I saw a while back of these soda cap mini candles and after looking at my seashell collection I thought these would also be a great container so I thought it would be fun to do a few different variation of these kind of mini containered candles. So how I did that was grabbing the seashell and instead of having to buy candle wax and actually making the candle I just lit a pre-existing candle that I had and let it burn for about five to ten minutes so that I had a bit of the wax melted and then blew it out and dipped a bit of yarn into the melted wax to to then kind of set in the center of the shell and then pour the wax over top of it to make it stick to the bottom. I used a popsicle stick to help me hold it up a little bit better and then once again relighted the candle and waited for even more wax to melt to pour on top of that and kind of finish it off. Once set, they are completely ready to use for decorative purposes only. I really want to emphasize on this, you do not want to burn candles without proper wick. This is just yarn. You want to use proper candle wax, a proper container for candles. You don't want to be burning certain types of metals and stuff like that. So these are for decorative purposes only. With all of the projects being complete, I can finally add them to the space. find a lot of random bits and pieces on the forest floor or in vines and stuff so the thought behind the trinket tray was just to have a space to put those little things but I of course also wanted to choose some of the decoration that went in here so that's where the trinkets came in. Not all of these projects will be just for the woods though. I either made doubles or specific pieces I'll also be using in my room because I really like these DIYs and definitely wanted to incorporate them in my room instead of just in the woods. The recycled paper I ended up actually using as a little canvas for a painting I did because the thicker paper I thought would work really well with some acrylic paint and actually hung it up on the same clothesline I used to dry it. I know at the end of my last video I rambled on for like five minutes talking about how much I love the space but it really feels complete now and I just could not be more happy with it. It has been such a fun place to relax and read and do art. With this project complete I'm super excited for my next video and I appreciate you guys coming along in this little two-part series. All of you left such lovely comments on the last video. It seriously means so much and I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I'm hoping you all liked this one as well. I wish you a wonderful week to come and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.